So the UK Consumer Prices Index, otherwise known as CPI, turned negative in April for the first time since records began in 1996. It is now at minus 0.1%, the first time it's turned negative since March 1960 when it was minus 0.6%. It basically means that a basket of goods that cost you £100 in April 2014 would have cost £99.90 in April this year. So whilst it's called negative inflation, it can be quite positive for us as consumers. And this is all thanks to the falling oil price, cheaper food and the strong pound. The biggest contribution to the fall came from a drop in air and sea fares. But there are downsides of negative inflation. Sustained falling prices could mean that, other than essentials, people put off buying goods as they wait for things to become cheaper. This would lead, though, to stagnation of the economy, which is a prolonged period of slow economic growth. Other downsides include poor interest rates on savings. It can lead to banks charging you to have deposits with them. The Bank of England now has to try to increase inflation towards its target of 2%, so low CPI could mean that interest rates would be at 0.5% for longer, which is bad news for savers. Let's say you put your money into a savings account paying 0.5%. It means that after accounting for inflation, the value of your money is actually falling each year. Deeper or more prolonged negative inflation could create growing speculation of interest rates being cut even further. Firms may delay investments and mortgages could become less affordable, especially if wages drop, and nobody wants that.